in the beginning of the show. One of the I I, I found based on my experience is I, I I watch a lot of YouTube in general, and I find loads of people who make like a three minute video, like a very very high quality video. They would do things over and over and over and over again and try to aspire to a certain level of uh, almost perfection. Like you cannot sneeze, you cannot move your eyes in certain ways, and it can take them like three hours to do three minute video, or some people will take like three days to do a three minute video. And this is one of the reasons I think when we started the show, I just said, well, we don't want to spend that much time on it, so we just do whatever have, you know, we just hit record button, we start talking, and everything will always be as a matter of principle. It is just very, you know, roughly drafted in a different way. Um, and we we never deviated from. I think we had suggestions that we should do it differently, and I think uh, one of the the attempts that you, uh, I mean, one of the shows that you're working on, we actually do try to. Uh, put some time into it and work on the quality and work on the, uh, all, you know, you, you actually know what you're going to talk about. Um, and that, that's fine, but, but I think that, that produces a different pace of show releases, that produces a different, less spontaneous, uh, you know, kind of staged jokes and staged, uh, uh, you know, surprises. And uh, uh, we, we, we just basically do whatever whatever comes to our mind, so... If somebody has a beer, you know, it's you just know it's going to be an interesting show. (laughs) Well, moving on to our next topic, um, it's uh, one of yours, Roy. I think you're going to talk a little bit about um, Apple and Microsoft and some patent deals. Yeah, well, uh, it's something we've been covering since the beginning of the show, and I I think it's one of the popular issues uh, among people who at least read my site. I'm not sure about yours, but I know yours covers the issue as well. It's this issue of injustice which really ticks me off sometimes, because uh, here we have uh, an operating system that was built from scratch. Uh, Richard Stallman originally was creating something that looks like uh, and behaves like Unix. And then came the kernel, and uh, and here we have an operating system. We have an operating system kernel. We don't depend so much on the applications, but then uh, Google comes along. It makes a very, very successful operating system. It puts it on phones, and it reached about, I imagine now it's something like 200 million phones. Uh, and then come Apple, and it says that's a stolen technology. I'm not, I don't think we've covered this before, but Steve Jobs in his kind of memoirs, or one of the guys wrote about him, and kind of had the approval of Jobs, you know, this is the, the, the approved kind of biography. Uh, he turns out he said that he wants to start a thermonuclear war on, uh, on on Android and calling it stolen technology, even though it's not stolen, and I suppose we could go into the reasons why in a you know, separate occasions. But uh, Apple basically thinks that it wants to remove any tablet, any phone, or something running something that resembles Apple's. Uh, and now they go after shops as well. So if you're in just a shop running it, uh, they go after you. If you're in Google, Apple doesn't go after you. But but you know Larry Ellison, the CEO of Oracle. He calls himself the best friend. He calls he calls Steve Jobs his best friend. That's a quote, and also an idol. So I'm pretty sure that there was something to do with Jobs promising to use up to like whatever he had. He said he said he was willing to spend forty million dollars. Sorry, forty billion dollars, just suing the hell out of Android and trying to get rid of it. Uh, and here we have a uh, basically Allison buying Soundboard. It was about six million or seven point, I think seven point four uh, trillion, uh, buying the company and then starting to sue Android, ex- expecting like royalties in every phone, perhaps even worth uh, billions of dollars. So I, I think that's got something to do with Apple. Uh, the Larry Ellison maybe doing a friend who's uh, now deceased uh, best friend, uh, and then we have Microsoft trying to tax the hell out of. Uh, out of uh, out of Android as well as uh, Linux, using all kinds of like file system patterns and things they won't tell us about. Uh, one thing I found out about today, I'm going to write about it, is one of the patterns they go after with uh, uh, when when they want to penalize Android is something to do with the you know when you load a page in a browser, it's got like a progress bar showing you percentages of how much of the page you loaded, and once the page is loaded, guess what happens? The progress bar disappears. Innovation, you know, and, and this is what they go after with, you know, they say Android infringes on this path, like, you know, Max didn't, didn't even invent browsing. I think they, I heard they have also a patent on tab browsing, even though their browser was just about the last one to actually implement tabs of all the browsers. 
because they they might they could be confusing or uh, whatever. So uh, so here we have those two companies trying to tax Linux and tax Android, and they signed they signed another deal, another extortion deal or settlement or protection money, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just about I would say about a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, after the last show, and now they have a new talking point. We we are we have license we we have licensed uh, more than half of all the Android devices. And they use this word licensing because guess what? You know, even though they don't make anything to do with Android, they never contributed any lines of code to it. They they have a licensing program. They say, well, if you want to if you want to sell Android, if you created something from scratch, you have to go to us to license Android. It kind of begs the question: What did you do for Android? Why would we have to go to Microsoft to license the, you know, its own competition? Well, um, in one respect, I think uh, I would suppose that Microsoft's thanking Google because if uh, if Android wasn't in existence, the market would be completely flooded by Apple and its products, and Microsoft wouldn't be getting a penny. And like we said many times before, it's alleged that Microsoft makes more money from Android licenses in inverted commas than it does from its own uh, platform, Windows Phone 7. Um, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. I don't think the Windows Phone 7 is showing any signs of uh, gathering momentum. I could be wrong. Um, Roy, have you got any stats or any opinions to differ? It depends on which direction. I'm sure you get some momentum somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I certainly have seen no excitement anywhere for it. Uh, The the odd comment. I don't see it. I would just remove a few words from your sentence. I don't see it. I never saw it, to be honest. I saw it in demos. Obviously, I did my research, but I've never seen a person use that. I don't expect to see a person use that. I've seen one once, um, an, uh, Windows Phone 7 in, in real life, and that's it, and I haven't seen it since. And uh, I would love to have, a, have another little look at it, another little go on it, but uh, no, it's, uh, it, it's non-existent in my uh, realm of friends and uh, colleagues. So I don't think that's going to change, and it'll certainly be interesting to see what they do with it when Windows 8 comes out, if Windows 8 is indeed going to be the platform that covers all form factors in very commas again, because it's much less speak. That's basically Vista AS7 again. Yeah. So what said about the current one, Vista 7, mm. which is the, 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 you know, the, the Vista with better marketing, uh, which said, you know, we're going to go for tablets, touch screens, uh, sub-notebooks, we're going to be very lightweight, we're going to work with every... I mean, even even these days, you look around, you, you don't see them on any of the tablets. So you see, they just talk nonsense. They just make all these promises. You know, oh, you know, Vista 7, or this Windows 7, uh, it's very, you know, it's, it's very much suitable for, you know, small devices and mobile, but you don't see it in any of them, mm. almost any of them. But I mean, I think people have gone past, got past Microsoft hype now. Uh, we saw it with the, especially with the kid, and all the uh, rash promises that were made with that. It was going to be the ultimate in social networking, phones, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it was mentioned quite a bit when he died. So. Well, yeah, it, it did. I mean, it, it was uh, ironically, it was um, it was talked about a lot when it uh, passed away. And I think 60, 60 odd days was its uh, lifespan in terms of. Uh, <laughs> so yes. Yeah, um, but yeah, and we're still talking about it today. So if Microsoft did one thing right, it was creating an entertaining product because you know certainly what I. Not just so, in, uh, the Linux news groups and the uh, also in forums in general, we increasingly show interest in Apple. Now, it doesn't mean anything that the Apple fans would try to imply, but it shows that people are getting past the fear or the concern about what Microsoft is doing in terms of the technical things. I think most when we mention Microsoft, Microsoft now, it's to do with the injustices of the patent extortion, racketeering. But with Apple, we actually are worried about what they try and offer technically, or at least what people perceive them to be, because loads of people will still buy quite a few Apple products. Uh, and we, we are increasingly seeing more and more posts about the actions of Apple, and that's a sign of the fact that the main competition for Linux now might be Apple, and not just Microsoft. But if, if you look at, just look at... Um Comboss uh, Linux advocacy. You look at the uh, subject titles now, and whereas this time last year, maybe, and this is just a rough figure off the top of my head, but 70, 80 percent of them were related to Microsoft topics. Now you're looking at about maybe two in ten 
at, at most are even mentioning Microsoft uh, as, as the main topic starter. So I think Apple is uh, growing uh, and in terms of the hearts and minds of the, the mainstream consumer and ergo that makes it a, a competitor for any alternative that's out there. And I've, I've got mixed views about Apple um, because I've got experience of people that use their products. I personally uh, don't use the products, and but my wife does, and she, she seems very happy with water.